Good morning, everybody. Let me show you what we got today. So yesterday we got new shoes on the trailer. And then last night I was kind of walking by and I saw a run of gear all coming down the, uh, from the end of the axle here. These Dexter oil bath axles, I've had issues with these little clear plastic sight glasses prior and what happens is these where they thread in where it meets the little seal it'll get a crack around the edges and uh, as soon as you start seeing oil running out on your wheel just replace these don't try to tighten them because for me it just doesn't work i keep extras and this is what i'm talking about there's a rubber seal right here and this part is threaded and i don't know if it's the vibrations i don't over tighten them you really don't have to tighten these much but they just develop a crack around this edge like right around in there and they'll start leaking and the last thing i want to happen is to just be on an hour long commute to a job and that crack get bad enough to where all the gear oil comes out soaks the wheel brakes and worst of all you lose your bearings it'll fry them right out of there if you've ever pulled a real heavy load those bearings get warm but the gear oil keeps them from just getting hot when you change these out it's also a good opportunity to inspect the bearings if you see bluing or discoloration maybe a, almost a bronze gold color to them that means they're getting hot for some reason and that is bad so luckily i'm just a short way from the yard for it to be seeping the way that it is where my adjustable wrench is that i used to get the thing unscrewed picked up my gear oil and i just use 80 90 weight gear oil in it and if you don't like smelling like the south end of misery you may want to wear rubber gloves and pull your sleeves up because gear oil is the worst smelling substance i think on the face of this planet it is unsurpassed it stinks there is no worse word it is just pungent horrible after we get this fixed we've got another overgrown logging road to clear i hope you guys aren't just sick and tired of the mulching videos i know it's kind of a monotonous and slow process but the main thing to drive home is there's work in it and when it gets to the cold time of year people want it done and believe me it's a lot more fun to do it than it is to watch it once we get the brush master rotary mower in we'll be able to move a lot quicker and it'll be more fun to watch for you guys i'll be honest with you guys and i've been honest with you guys from the very start it is exciting to get a lot of views on a video it's exciting because i know you guys are enjoying it i know that you guys it's something that you want to see but just as importantly for me is that you guys are getting something out of it that i'm helping you guys along in getting your little business started and it's not just digging in the dirt most of the time when you go in to do any job just about especially here in the mountains you've got to clear brush you've got to clear a couple of trees out to get it out of your way and there are just multiple different ways of doing it there's different ways of making your business successful and i'm telling you and you guys can follow the fluctuations of my business you saw during the summertime when it was rainy a lot of driveways a lot of road and culvert repairs that's the season well then the season transitions to fall time and everybody all the homeowners are saying all right everything stopped growing i'm ready to have my property back that's what they're thinking and you're just the person to do it you've got a machine but you've got to have the ability to either mow it down or haul it off so you've got the machine and you've got the, hopefully the truck if you don't have a truck you're probably going to end up either having to sub out which is not the end of the world 
it probably cost you 100 to 150 dollars per load for a haul bill to haul out material if it's within an hour or so of the place where they're going to take it to contracting is a good way to get your start especially if you just don't have the funds or the credit to acquire things for yourself when you don't have the equipment the muscle to get a job done that's when it's important to focus on what you do have and that's your brain don't go and look at a job and just because you don't have the assets or the initial knowledge to get that job done don't just say I don't think I can do this job this job isn't for me take a couple of days tell them you know let me go work a quote for you and figure it out there's been a lot of times that I went and looked at a job and it was outside of what I initially knew how to do. That does not mean you're incapable of figuring it out and doing a good job for the customer. Give yourself a couple of days to work with. Go home, let it soak in, and ideas will start coming to you. You don't have a dump truck, you don't have an excavator, and it's like, you know, I started out wanting to do a little bit of excavation, and all you have is a shovel and a wheelbarrow. Well, then comes along a job that's too big for your shovel and wheelbarrow. What are you gonna do? You don't have the credit or the money to buy an excavator, but you can rent. You don't have the initial money. Say your rental company makes you pay up front. That's where you get a deposit from your customer. You get a deposit for the money to get the excavator initially. Then there's your shovel you've got a rented excavator your wheelbarrow you need a dump truck he's going to be your wheelbarrow you call around and find somebody that's going to work with you you know somebody that's going to let you pay them at, you know at the end of the day or you get enough in that deposit to cover the dump truck fees you're going to have to do some footwork you're going to have to make some phone calls okay so you call the rental company you get the cost of the rent for however long it's gonna take you to do this job. You call your dump truck guy, call several, get some prices and availabilities. Then, once you've got that price, you've got your overhead. You know, the fuel for the excavator, you can fill it up at the end of the day. You rent one, it should come full of fuel. That's a given. So now you've got a day of operating time. You've got a day of operating. So, shovel, wheelbarrow. Most excavation and grading jobs require shovel, wheelbarrow. Now, depending on the size of your shovel and the size of your wheelbarrow, and that's what you gotta think. That Thinking like that will give you the courage to take on a job that's bigger than what you've done before because you're moving dirt or you're moving gravel from one spot to the other and you're shaping it. How much, the quantity that you have to move that's the factor that decides on how big your shovel and wheelbarrow have to be. You don't want to get one that's way bigger than what you need because then the overhead's going to kill you. You're not going to make profit. You don't want to get something so small that it takes you 30 years to do the job. You better believe that you can do it. And you guys can do it. If you just don't have anybody to help you out, you don't have a rental company that's going to work with you, whatever, to just say, run the excavator digging ditches for a day, it's 1,500 bucks. Okay, you're gonna put a lot of ditch in, but you could dig it by hand. You won't want to, and it won't be fun, but you can. It's gonna take you a heck of a lot longer, but you can still get that job done, and you can still make 1,500 bucks. If you're just working yourself, and the only thing you're fueling is yourself, and food you've got a $20 shovel and I don't know what $75 wheelbarrow that's pretty good profit margin if you ask me it'd be a crazy undertaking to try to match what an excavator can dig in a day but uh, there are people out there who do it and there are jobs where the excavator can't get to it guess what that's where you can come in and that's where you start your excavation and grading company by taking that job nobody else wants Eventually, you'll build up to where you're getting jobs everybody wants, if you're smart.
Just in that short a distance, we went from a drip to oh my. <laughs> Usually it's like torqued on. Oh man, that's what's happened. They've torqued it on too tight. Oh man. That's not good. Uh oh. We may have a problem here, folks. We may have a problem. They must have checked my oil or took us off and checked my bearings. Got it. Way too tight. Oh yeah, that's way too tight. That should be popping right off of there. the exact right tool for this job obviously <laughs> see how tight that was Dang. that should just almost be just hand tightened I would never put that thing on there that tight come on baby see how tight that is golly Woo. ain't no wonder how I keep mashing my <laughs> Keep mashing my fingers every time that thing slips off. I guess we'll just keep doing this the way it's working. Somebody gets this thing cross I believe. That's my guess. That may not be what's going on, but man, that thing's not wanting to come off easy. And you know what? I ain't no sense in getting mad about it. <laughs> I definitely don't like it. Smashing my fingers though. Get that thing's cross That thing should be. I should be able to just grab that thing and twist it, but it's not. I'm sure they probably pulled this off and checked it, because I know I didn't put that thing on that time. We'll check him out here in a minute and see what's going on. Hateful cuss. It's starting to spin easier though. I'll have this thing beat to pieces before I get it off. There he goes. There he goes. Huh? Man, I'll tell you, it was 84 degrees yesterday. It is chilly this morning. about all our oil driving down here. Bangs look good though, they're shiny. There you go. I don't see a hairline fracture, but we'll see. It's like that food boy that stuff stinks. <laughs> Lord that smells awful. See, there wasn't no oil left in there. It don't have a lot to begin with, though. That is drippy, drippy. Whew. I'm gonna get me another bunch of shop rags. Now, I don't want to get any fibers in here. I'm just checking for metal shavings or something. Nope. All good, but there's definitely some stuff that's caught in that seat where that seal 
fits in. So I don't know if it happened at the shop or if they even took this off. But we're not going to worry about that because it doesn't matter at this point. We just know that it needs to be fixed. What's well, some black wool, isn't it? It's amazing how it turns from kind of a tan, clear color to uh, shoo -shoo. So now, this is easy. These little, we're going to make sure this is all clean. That's not a scientific way to make sure it's clean. Clean them out real good. Clean my seal. Now I know that this is clean. It feels clean and smooth. Yep. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little oil right there. And I'm going to wet the seal. Real good. It don't don't be shy. Because that's what's going to help him seal on up. And then we're going to make sure that we get the threads right. And what I'll do is I'll put it on there and I spin it backwards till I feel it click. Right there. You'll hear it. See how easy that spins on now? We were having to hammer that other one off. So something was going on. Now. Now we got you. Don't we? What I'm going to do. Is I'm going to drag this like this. They do make a uh, socket like thing. That. Uh, will fit over this. But you don't have to tighten it. But just. A little bit. You haven't got to tighten it. Pound out of these. Right. That's, if you can see that rubber seal mush out around through there, I'm going to tighten it just a little bit more. I don't want to get it too tight. I'm using this rag to kind of cushion that seal around it. There, I'm happy with that. That is plenty tight. Now, I'm going to pull this little plug out of the end just like this. Don't lay it face down or you'll get grit on it and it can get into your bearings. Now we got this bottle. Actually, let me show you first. You got to, there's a seal on the inside. Let me get my razor knife. Make sure your razor knife is clean so you don't get stuff down in here. I'm just going to start this just like that. Even when it's new, Stinks. Stuff smells awful. Awful. I'm gonna be careful not to leave any loose pieces on here because we don't want to inadvertently pump it into there. We want this. All these bearings have to be extremely clean. Now. I've usually got a couple of these on hand. Don't cut the snikies out of yourself. And you feel this, not all the way up, but up to this, there's an oil level line. So what I'll do is I'll stick this way over here. Just fill it up. It'll squeeze right in there and it does not take much. We're setting level two. So you want to do this on a level surface just a touch now I'm gonna go ahead and put my cap on so what you know moisture in the air doesn't get in there one thing you can do is take a little bit of oil and put it around this edge and it'll help this cap go in and seal too and what I'll do is when I get to my next stop I'll check and add extra oil if I need to. And that's how you change one of those Dexter oil bath globes. I'm going to call it a globe. Now, your next best friend, besides shop rags, is brake clean. Now, 
I am not sponsored by Brake Clean. I'm telling you to use it because I love it. And it's the st oh no. Ah, shoot. Another good thing for brake clean. There you go. This stuff will cut oil grease. It don't matter. Kind of work for a bit. I thought this was a knee bottle. I thought wrong. There. Gotta clean up cleaning a whistle. Actually, I don't know how clean a whistle can be when you're blowing spit into them. Maybe that's just not a good analogy. Maybe I need to think of something else. Now, another reason I want to clean this is so I know whether the seals are not. It could be something going on with the end of that axle hub. Who knows? Look at that. Cleans that wheel's been in a while, isn't it? Now, we're about ready to go to work, ain't we? Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. So that's soaking into those bearings now. We may end up having to go ahead and do something. Add a little bit more. And that's okay. I don't mind. Mind over matter. I don't mind and it don't matter. Alrighty. I'd say that's fixed. Alrighty. So now that we have finally gotten that, I guess, hub seal cap thing fixed. Let's see if we can crawl across this ditch that uh, Tropical Storm Zeta so nicely bored across my little excess driveway here. So we floor it across here. Come on, baby. Get on going. There we go. Bull, baby, bull. Oh, yeah. Old 750 will pull up through there. Atta boy. Now. This job that we're going to today is, it's kind of a rewarding feeling because I actually went and looked at this job four years ago. Four years, I have not waited to do it. <laughs> you know, a lot of times it's hard to not be a little disgruntled if you go all the way, I mean, like way out somewhere and look at a job for somebody and then you just don't hear from them. Mildly insulting. But I have, experienced on multiple multiple occasions over my years of doing this and being in business sometimes people just need time to think about your quote and apparently this one needed four years he actually called us back in april too and i think he didn't realize that he talked to us before and so he needed a clearing quote i said okay something, something to the effect of okay where are you at didn't hear nothing back again. <laughs> you know, in that case, I just wrote off because I didn't even know who I was talking to. But then, called us up a couple of days ago and uh, needed it done quick. So I told my wife, I was like, I'm going to work in because I'm not missing out on this one. I guess the moral of that story is don't get discouraged when you don't hear right back from somebody after you go out and spend your time giving them a quote. Because four years later, you may get that money. Get in here and get a little bit of push water for the old excavator. Be right back. 
All right, now we're underway. That we've gotten old uh, Yeller back there fueled up, and he's raring to go, man. That monster's chomping at the bit to bite into some wood. So I know the mulching videos are not the forte of the people that I have subscribed, but there are a lot of you that are getting some good out of it. And for those of you who stick it out and watch this video and are here for the mulching and information, at some point during this video, I'm gonna tell you how much I charged for this job, exactly how much I charged for it. That's a tidbit of information that will really help you guys. I'm gonna kind of describe the market that I'm in, kind of what you can charge for mulching with a unit of this size. I have been all over the place. I've been from, I mean, when I first started, I think I was at like 1250 for an eight hour day, all the way up to like $2,500 for a day. And there are people they can only afford that low end and there are people who don't care have plenty of money and they'll pay for that high end but it comes down to really what is it worth like what can you really charge the average person because that's who you want to kind of gaze it toward if you price your jobs for the average person you're going to still win some of the lower uh, bidders, some people who are on that lower end of affordability, and you're definitely going to win people who don't care. So that's that's what will help make you successful, not just in forestry mulching, but in excavation, grading, land clearing, demolition business altogether. You want to be fair, and I've always thought, you know, when I look at a job, what's it worth to me? What would I be willing to pay? And What's it worth to me is the most important because if you're throwing numbers out there that the job is just not worth it to somebody, of course they're not gonna pay you. They're not gonna hire you. They're gonna be the ones that tell you you're crazy and you're way overpriced and some of you that'll make mad. <laughs> but, you know, don't take it personally. When you give somebody a bid and they're like, oh, that's way too much. Don't look at it, you know, the best thing you can do is be like, well, it's not too much, it's you can't afford me, or you can't afford the job. That's what'll keep you from getting angry and bitter about it. Business is full of emotions. You're gonna go through excitement, happiness, sadness, depression, anger, every bit of it. Being in business, will, you will feel every emotion that you're capable of feeling, period. I've felt every one of them, and I don't know anybody who's been in business who hasn't felt every one of them at some point. But the best one is pride. It makes you feel proud when you're a small business and you're the person that takes the phone call. You're the person that lines up the quote. You go meet the person. You give the person the prize. They hire you. They want you to be on their job. You complete that job. You collect your payment. And you leave having, most of the time, I've left feeling like I made a friend and a repeat customer. That's pride. You will feel proud of yourself. And for these contractors who are out here getting that deposit and then just running away, these gypsies as they call them, you'll never feel pride. You, you may feel accomplished, you may feel like you pulled one on somebody, but you'll never feel pride in yourself. It gives me pride to feel like I've done something for my family and I'm taking care of them. And I couldn't have done near what I've done without Kelly. She came into my life and she jumped right in, you know, and she gets to feel that pride. She gets to send out gravel loads and be a part of it we're a real team in every way and that's happiness that is a real happiness so treat your customers right treat those around you right and you will live a life of, full, of fulfillment so now let's cruise on up here and get this machine unloaded and seek out that pride 
that most of us hunger for. Alrighty, let's have some fun. Alrighty, so I decided to put you guys back there with the screen up so you can hear how I let the head spool up and how I control it. And uh, it's going to be a little bit loud. So, I'm going to put my fur plugs in, safety glasses on. And if I need to, I'll just shut this screen kind of intermittently. And we'll just do some real time mulching here. We've got little bitty saplings, we've got some power lines overhead up there. But try not to sling stuff in this guy's driveway. So. Let's make some stuff
question. How much does this job cost in the customer for mulching? $2,200. How long is this going to take? I'm not really sure. I guess you guys will have to keep watching to find that out. And you'll have to just keep on watching if you want to to uh, see just how much distance of this road we are going to cover. We'll cover that toward the end. May not be the end. I may stall at the end and just keep it watching. Not really. I'm not like that. Then, if y'all want to skip forward just uh, the last few minutes, I'll go over the whole road and walk it and uh, describe what the whole job entailed. That way you know what I was able to charge $2,200 to do. Easy peasy. I'm not a hard person to get along with. I don't think I am.
don't recommend having this screen up.
take us a quick little trip down through here. And you guys can kind of judge for yourselves. I think it's probably about 400 feet, 400 to 500 feet of logging road. Thank you guys for your support. I really, really mean that. And 
every single view I appreciate. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't say it enough times. Hopefully you're having a great day. I know I am, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.